Thank you for joining me again today on Side by Side. And I do hope that you're able to reflect a little bit beyond just the few moments we spend together when we think about these Beatitudes, because they really are at the very core of what a Christian is. The words of Jesus, precise and accurate. And today we move on to the next one, which says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. The desires that arise from within us will always reflect our hearts. The heart that demonstrated a change in recognizing its spiritual poverty, the first beatitude, leading to genuine sorrow, the second beatitude, and the beauty of meekness, the third beatitude, Now we are beginning to see things as they really are. We have, by grace, outwitted the deception of Satan, who has forever been deluding and blinding our eyes. Grace has truly opened our eyes to see beneath the surface and catch the ugliness presented as something beautiful. Coming to faith in the Lord Jesus is leaving the real corrupting way of thinking and living. We discover what is true, what's genuinely true, what's truly attractive. We discover the pure taste, not simply simply something that's like sweetened artificially to hide the bitterness. So when we speak of hunger and thirsting for righteousness, this is having a newly acquired appetite for the real, the genuine, the healthy, the life-giving, the enhancing, the quality that we see in the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Now, sadly, there are times when even in Christian circles, there is a sort of a false presentation of this. That is, where we seem to present something that looks like righteousness, the sort of external morality, kind of miserable, not at all the life-giving, delighting, joy-bringing and heartwarming of true righteousness. A perfectly straight line, balanced, harmonious music, the symmetry, the correct, a meal made to perfection, the best ever coffee, perfect architecture. These things convey in their own sphere a little bit of maybe what we might call a righteous. But as we have said before, most are seeking for the happiness part of this, but miss the real purpose of it. It's not Blessed are those who seek to be happy. No, and yet that is what Satan's trick is. We hunger in our world, don't we, for happiness. That's the twistedness of it. I don't know if you remember, but some years ago when David Cameron was the Prime Minister, he established a sort of a quotient of happiness. I don't think he had a department for happiness, but he certainly had someone who was given the responsibility to look at the happiness level of the people in society. What a tragedy. But of course, it's not so far away from the people in the States back at the time of the Declaration of Independence. What did they say in their great statements? But life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones, who I've referred to because his book, Studies in the, Series, uh, Studies in the Sermon on the Mount, is really excellent. He said, it's a, bit, a little bit like The patient who's in pain, wanting to be relieved of the pain. Now that's understandable, he says. They would want that. But if the doctor only wants to relieve the pain and not get to the cause, then the doctor is feeling so badly. And so the example is clear. If we as Christians seek the happy state, well then we're going to miss the whole point. We must be seeking the source of all blessing. And perhaps this is a warning against experiencing or simply seeking an experience or emotional uplifts. Let's ask then the question, what is righteousness? Well, it's not morality nor respectability, for that's what Jesus found in those around him who claimed to be righteous, and he condemned it. But true righteousness is a desire to be free of sin in every form which means to be able to have the deepest and closest relationship with God, for sin is the one thing that creates the barrier between us and our Lord. But it's not just to be free from sin, it's to be free from the very desire of sin. 
that deep work of the heart, which is the source of all desires. And in another sense, it's to be free from selfishness, isn't it? Because meekness is truly to be the non-self person. So I think we could say it is to be like Jesus, and that is in every way. Not necessarily for what we get, but because we understand this to be above all else, to be the best, the perfect life, the original. He is the true man of true people, true humanity. So what then does it mean to hunger and thirst? Well, hunger and thirst increase the longer we go on. There comes to a kind of a, a kind of a desperate state, doesn't there? There's nothing moderate about these two words. We can't say, you know, we're, we're a wee bit peckish, but that's far from saying you hunger. I mean, if, if somebody says to you, how hungry are you? You say, I'm ravenous. You know, I could eat, I could eat the whole thing and plate and all. That's hunger. I mean, just being a little bit hungry is not what this is talking about. I mean, take love, for example. If we really love someone, that love grows deeper all the longer that we cannot realize it. It's like Psalm 42, where we read there, As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so my soul pants after you, O Lord. It's a very serious matter. And if we're not serious about it, it shows that there's something defective in the foundation of our very faith. This hunger is going to motivate us to seek and search and long. I may have used this illustration before, but it fits perfectly here to illustrate the point of the older man who was baptising folk in India and the little boy who kept pestering him, wanting to be baptised. Then, after some time, the older man invited him into the water and held him under the water until he was just about to <laughs> give up breathing completely. He couldn't hold his breath any longer, and then he just let him out. And when he, his head burst through the water... And he gasped for breath because his lungs were just crying out for breath. When he all, all was settled down again, the older man said to him, When you want Jesus more than you wanted that breath, come back to me and I'll baptise you. You see, that's hungering. That's thirsting. The scripture says, of course, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness because they will be filled. Filled. When we reach that place of determination, our hearts so earnest to be like Jesus, we will be filled. And there is a sense in which there is an immediate filling, as it were. When we become united to Christ by faith, God looks at us as righteous, full of his son's righteousness. That's how he sees us. He looks at us the way he looks at Jesus. And we get, as the, the big word is, we are, the righteousness of Jesus is imputed. It's given over to us. And so God views us as fully as Jesus. But then there's also a process. And that's how we go on day by day. We, we are delivered, of course, from the penalty of sin when we are trusting in Christ who's taken the penalty of sin. But then the Holy Spirit is enabling us to be freed from that power of sin. This hungering and thirsting, this ongoing hungering and thirsting, this is part of that work of the Holy Spirit. Eternity is the goal where all sin will be gone. So, you know, one of the great comforts to us in death for our loved ones is that they have reached that place. Oh, the joy of those who have come into that place of peace. But this is a really good test of our hearts. And it's a great comfort at the same time. The promise is clear and definite and full of hope inducing. So daily keep this before us. Daily be on our search and daily enjoy the success. And if you're struggling with this, pray for it. Lord, give me a hunger. Give me a thirst to be like Jesus. Give me an understanding of the beauty of my Lord. Help me to see everything else as it truly is. The, 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 the way that it's portrayed by darkness and evil and to see the truth and to pursue that as the most beautiful of all. I trust that this weekend you'll be able to do that also your quiet times, but also when you gather for worship. And if you're joining us in Portrush, I look forward to be able to spend that time with you and trust the Lord will bless us all together. <laughs>